this young boy king became one of the most powerful symbols in Egyptological history. Across the desert sands and along the banks of the mighty Nile River lies a land that has captivated the human imagination for centuries. Known for its awe-inspiring pyramids, enigmatic hieroglyphs, and legendary pharaohs, this ancient civilization has held countless secrets within its grasp. For years, scientists and researchers have delved deep into Egypt's history, unearthing remarkable treasures and piecing together the puzzle of its past. Yet, amidst the treasures, a chilling truth emerges, discoveries that defy explanation, that send shivers down the spines of even the most seasoned experts. Join us as we unveil 15 discoveries in Egypt that scare scientists. Number 15. The Book of Two Ways Imagine a tale whispered through time, echoing down the corridors of ancient Egypt. It's a story of a book veiled in mystique, whispered about in hushed tones. They call it the Book of Two Ways. It's said to be a thread connecting mortals to the ethereal realm beyond, a roadmap to the enigmatic Egyptian afterlife. Long before the sands of history obscured its secrets, this book paved the way for souls departing the earthly realm. Imagine, a guide for the journey beyond life's horizon, leading travelers through perilous paths. It precedes the famed Book of the Dead, a treasure trove of spiritual wisdom. The book illustrates twin, meandering roots, each more treacherous than the other. Imagine these twisting trails, one a dance of footfalls upon solid earth, the other a serenade along the whispering waters, both a journey and a choice. Amidst the shadows of this afterlife lies Rastal, the realm of Osiris, death's sovereign. Osiris, once living, now departed, guards the gates of eternity. For those bold enough to navigate the maze of demons and fire, a chance at becoming a deity awaits. This is the prize whispered to souls embarking on the afterlife's expedition. The perils are manifold, demons lurking in the darkness, flames licking at ethereal heels, and vigilant guards armed and steadfast. These challenges necessitated guidance. Thus, the Book of Two Ways, an intangible companion for souls on their journey. A group of modern-day explorers, led by the archaeologist Dr. Willems, brushed off the sands of time. In 2012, they delved into the burial shafts near the Nile's eastern banks, unraveling the book's enigma. These tombs, once the resting place of monarchs, now held remnants of this four-millennia-old guide. Number 14. Tomb of Egyptian God Osiris in the realm of Egyptian archaeology, an era-shifting revelation has dawned. Before this unearthing, the focus of explorers was inexorably drawn towards the netherworld, that shadow dominion presided over by the enigmatic deity, Osiris. And now, from the veils of time, a structure emerges, believed to encapsulate the resting place of this very god, a tomb worthy of Osiris. This underworld sovereign, often equated with the realm of Hades, remains a god shrouded in legend. Yet in the heart of their findings, archaeologists stumbled upon a structure, darkened by ages bearing the marks of time's passage. This edifice, it is postulated, stands as a tribute to the god, an altar where rituals once forged bridges between pharaohs and Osiris. In this symbiotic dance, pharaohs sought a connection, a channeling of Osiris's life-giving might. For Osiris, the bestower of life held the promise of eternal existence. Across history's fabric, the elite of ancient Egypt yearned for the coveted mercy of Osiris, the key to resurrection from the clutches of mortality. Pharaohs and magnates spared no effort in reverence, aware that the god's favor could etch their names into the scrolls of eternity. It's a pact with divinity that demands veneration and respect. The tomb's unveiling transpired within the Algeed embrace of the Luxor region's necropolis. Researchers weave threads of conjecture, whispering that this sepulcher might trace its lineage to an era stretching back between 760 to 525 BC. Within its cryptic corridors, a tale unfolds, shafts leading to undiscovered domains, a chapel resonating with spiritual echoes, and a corridor flanked by sentinels. Armed guardians, immortalized in stone, stand sentinel in a display of eternal vigilance, 
Their purpose is to shield the deity's sanctum. Though the spirits elude the grasp of the mortal gaze, their presence is etched in the figures that line the passageways, immortal protectors of Osiris's realm. Number 13, Tomb of King Tutankhamun. Moving deep into the labyrinthine corridors of time and uncover the tale of the iconic King Tutankhamun, a figure etched deeply in Egypt's storied past, he strides through history not only as a boy king, but intriguingly as a possible boy soldier. Beyond the allure of Osiris's tomb, a revelation beckons, reshaping the narrative that enshrouded Tutankhamun. A name resonating through millennia, King Tutankhamun sits upon a throne of curiosity. His tomb was a sepulcher untouched by the ravages of time until the fateful day when Howard Carter breached its ancient sanctuary on November 26, 1922. Within its chambers lay treasures, and among them, an enigma, leather armor, evoking the memory of a young king's untamed velour. Convention stood on its head as these artifacts were subjected to the scrutiny of specialized lenses. The armor, an ancient relic worn by Tutankhamun, bore the marks of battles past. Tiny fissures and well-worn edges sang a silent anthem of conflict. Lucy Skinner, an oracle of ancient Egyptian leather from the University of Northampton lent her insights. She uncovered the tales that the armor whispered, revealing that the boy king, contrary to prior beliefs, had experienced life's rigors upon the battlefield. An enigma unfurls against the backdrop of health theories that had swathed the young monarch. Echoes from the past had whispered that Tutankhamun had struggled with infirmities, genetic bone-wasting, and a clubfoot, an interaction of maladies that should have shackled him. Yet, the battle-worn armor stands as proof of a will unyielding to a spirit unchained. Now, the dusty veils of time have parted once more, and the tunic-like garment, known as a to harass, finds its haven in the hallowed halls of Cairo's new Grand Egyptian Museum. In its embrace lies not only the vestiges of Tutankhamun's velour, but also the tantalizing fragments of a story that continues to unravel. Number 12. Yale Archaeologists' Ancient Egyptian Billboard In the ongoing quest to unlock Egypt's ancient enigmas, a remarkable discovery has emerged from the sand-swept depths. Imagine this. Ancient billboard-sized hieroglyphs, an archaeologist's canvas, have unveiled their tales in the venerable city of El Kab. These colossal characters, resembling monumental art, were unearthed by a collaboration between Yale and the Royal Museum of Art and history in Belgium. These larger-than-life symbols stand tall, about 21.7 inches, tracing back 5,200 years. A tableau of four signs etched from right to left graces this stone canvas. The image dances with vitality, a bull's head poised atop a short pole, flanked by saddle-billed storks, cradling an ibis bird. The overall display spans 27.5 inches, casting a spellbinding tail upon the sands of time. Debate once stirred around their age, yet John Coleman Darnell, a Yale professor co-directing the El Cab Desert Survey, stands resolute. He proclaims a birth around 3,252 BCE, a nod to history, as these hieroglyphs bear resemblance to the earliest Egyptian symbols. What sets these monumental carvings apart is their sheer scale. Unlike their inch-high counterparts, these characters were scripted to seize attention from a distance, ancient billboards communicating across time. This discovery heralds an astonishing revelation that the ancient Egyptians wielded their hieroglyphic quills not just on diminutive parchment, but upon monumental stones, leaving a fabric for generations to unravel. Through these carvings, Egypt's secrets breathe, revealing the vast realm of their writing, stretching across geography and time. Technology, the modern-day adventurer, guided the journey to unravel these secrets. With innovative recording techniques from Yale, archaeologists captured each nuance, each whisper that time had etched upon the stones. Number 11. Whales on the Land Imagine the seismic ripples of astonishment that would race through your mind at the mere mention of whales striding upon the land. But this isn't a whimsical tale spun from thin air. Rather, it's a revelation of epic proportions forged by the hands of a team of Egyptian researchers, illuminating an untold chapter of Earth's history. For ages, 
the collective understanding held whales as sovereigns of the sea, creatures forever bound to aquatic realms. The boundaries of their world, it was believed, remained confined to water's embrace, save for their ultimate journey to the beyond. Yet, this team of explorers did what many thought impossible. They unearthed a 43-million-year-old whisper from Egypt's depths, a fossil of a whale ancestor. What's truly captivating is that this ancient leviathan raises a curtain on the story of the cetacean's evolution, reimagining their journey from terra firma to watery realms. It's akin to time traveling, glimpsing these ancient beings as they navigated a world both familiar and alien. This newfound relic isn't a mere curiosity, it's a symphony of revelations. It is believed to belong to a lineage that straddled two worlds, the solid ground and the flowing tide. These beings, defying categories, carved their existence within Earth's grand theater. The fossil was birthed in the heart of Egypt's western desert, within the echoes of a bygone sea. This locale, once submerged, now houses the echoes of beings that once navigated the waves, creatures whose existence hinged upon the embrace of the sea's watery bounty. This creature, fossilized in time's grip, stretched roughly three meters in length, a colossus that weighed about 600 kilograms. It prowled the land, and like an artist's brushstroke, painted a living by preying upon fellow creatures. Number 10. King Tutankhamun's Dagger King Tutankhamun's legacy is a shimmering fabric woven with marvels that defy the passage of time. Among the treasures adorning his tomb, a special dagger brimming with secrets unveiled its cosmic origin. This dagger, not just a tool of utility but a proof of his reign, whispers stories of kings and meteorites. Imagine the spectacle. A blade of rare iron, forged not from Earth's womb, but from a meteorite's fiery heart. Scientists harnessing the power of advanced X-ray technology from the Polytechnic University of Milan delved into the dagger's composition. The results revealed 10% nickel and 0.6 cobalt, hallmarks of a cosmic heritage. Yet this cosmic origin tale wasn't solely etched in iron. It was a symphony echoed in the heavens. As they compared the dagger with 11 metallic meteorites, scientists found kinship in the elements, forging a celestial bond that transcends time. The beauty of this revelation lies in its ability to dispel shadows of doubt. The origins of this iron blade had long courted controversy, shrouded in speculation. The portable X-ray fluorescent spectrometry became the luminary, illuminating the truth and casting aside lingering uncertainty. This blade, hailing from the 14th century BC, nestled beside Tutankhamun in the tomb's embrace, tucked close to his mummy's right thigh. Its hilt, a gilded work of art, adorned with a crystal knob, speaks of a king's opulence. The blade's golden sheath whispered secrets, a fabric woven with patterns of feathers, lilies, and the fierce visage of a jackal. A second gold blade lay beneath the folds, resting against his abdomen, its gleam proof of the rareness of iron during that era. Iron, in those times, was the treasure more coveted than gold, reserved for the regal and the decorative. Intriguingly, the reverence for iron wasn't just about its rarity. It was about the furnace's roar, the inferno that was required to mold and shape this precious metal. The high heat, a crucible of transformation, wasn't just a test of skill, but a proof of human ingenuity. Number 9. Queen Nefertiti's Mummy Leg Amid these revelations of antiquity's splendors, a darker narrative weave its tendrils. The tale of thieves and robbers who cast shadows upon the treasures of the past. Imagine the once rich tombs now echoing with emptiness, their riches carted away by these despoilers of history. A strange echo reverberates as the tomb's occupants, the mummies too, sometimes vanish, spirited away for reasons that remain shrouded in mystery. Perhaps these ancient bandits coveted a gallery of mummies, an assembly of the long deceased, forever frozen in time. Moving further to the story of Queen Nefertari, a potent figure nestled within the annals of ancient Egyptian politics. The enigmatic wife of King Ramses II embodied a quiet force that emanated from behind the throne's facade. Her eternal abode, 
celebrated for its resplendent wall paintings, resided in the Valley of Queens. But alas, this sacred chamber fell victim to grave robbers, its treasures pilfered long before Ernesto Schiaparelli's fateful discovery in 1904. He, like an archaeologist torchbearer, ventured into the abyss, unearthing a room abandoned, bereft of its once prized possessions. Amid the forlorn relics, a pair of sandals and leg bones stood as the vestiges of an era past. And yet the question lingered like an ancient riddle. Did these leg bones truly belong to the queen? With scientific instruments as their guide, researchers embarked on a quest to unlock the past's secrets. X-rays, radiocarbon dating, and chemical analysis interacted with the ancient canvas, painting a portrait of the bone's bearer. The knees bore traces of mild arthritis, imprinted by the hands of time and a life well-lived, possibly between 40 and 60 years. A jigsaw of hypotheses and deliberations ensued, weaving a fabric of possibilities. After this odyssey of inquiry, archaeologists ventured a conclusion. These limbs were likely those of the queen herself. An intricate ballet of science and history thus concluded, identifying Nefertari through the lens of time. However, the shadows of uncertainty loomed, a reminder that history's true essence often remains just beyond our grasp. Number 8. Tomb of King Tutankhamun's Wife the intrigue surrounding Tutankhamun's demise and the revelation of his tomb has traversed time, echoing through the ages. But did you also know, nestled within the heart of history, was the presence of a young queen by his side? Yes, Tutankhamun had a wife named Ankhesenamun, her very existence weaving a thread of enigma and possibility. Ankhesenamun, born to the heretic pharaoh Akhenaten and Nefertiti, emerges as a pivotal figure. Yet her familial ties remain a riddle, entwined with uncertainty. Was she Tutankhamun's sister or half-sister? The sands of history shift, revealing mere glimpses of their shared journey. Through the canvas of art, Ankhesenamun's path comes to light. A naked baby upon her mother's shoulder evolves into a young girl gracing state functions alongside her parents. Her fate entwined with Tutankhamun she was likely wed to him as he ascended the throne at a tender age, casting Egypt into a realm of rulership by an eight-year-old king and his teenage sister-wife. Their partnership was not just one of marriage, but a union bound by the divine. And Kezenamun's influence rippled through diplomacy, religious rituals, and governance. A newly unveiled discovery now dances on history's stage, the tomb believed to be hers, nestled in the Valley of the Kings. Dr. Hawass, former head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, posits that the tomb adjacent to Pharaoh's may belong to her. Foundation deposits and intricate offerings of consecrated objects hint at her presence. Ankhesenamun's presence wasn't relegated to the shadows. She graces the adorned back panel of Tutankhamun's golden throne, depicted in the anointing ritual. The threads of history unite as she stands, both queen and priestess, her legacy intertwined with the destiny of a young king. Number 7. The Lost City of Gold One of archaeology's finest triumphs emerged in Egypt, a 3,000-year-old vanished city dubbed the Lost Golden City, igniting echoes of an era long past. This discovery likened in significance to the unveiling of Pharaoh Tutankhamun's tomb wasn't even the researchers' primary aim. Their quest, in September 2020, led them to Luxor's Western Bank, where they hoped to unearth King Tutankhamun's mortuary temple. However, fate had other plans. As if touched by ancient whispers, their efforts bore fruit far grander. An entire metropolis emerged from the sands. In April 2021, renowned Egyptologist Zahi Hawass unveiled the metropolis's name, Aten, once a thriving hub nurtured by King Amenhotep the third of the 18th dynasty. Nestled within the embrace of Luxor's southern heart, Aten stretches across history, a testament to its sprawling grandeur. As the empire thrived, this metropolis flourished as the pinnacle of administration and industry, offering us a glimpse into life when Egypt's coffers brimmed with wealth. The excavation, slated to commence between the temples of Amenhotep III and King Ramses III in September, peels back time's curtain. 
a city preserved in astonishing detail, an archaeological marvel. The rooms and walls pulse with the heartbeat of yesteryears, adorned with tools and artifacts of daily existence. Each corner whispers stories, the colored pottery, jewelry, and mud bricks branded with Amenhotep III's seals, standing as testament. Yet, the tale remains unfinished. The sands of Aten hold untold riches. Envisioned within this ancient realm are untouched tombs, and crypts cradling treasures beyond imagination. As archaeologists embark on this journey, brushes with history's canvas reveal what was once concealed proof of human ingenuity, and an era long past, etched in the sands of time. Number 6. The Road to Cleopatra's Tomb In the realm of Tapos Iris Magna, a northern Egyptian marvel, archaeologist Kathleen Martinez and her team undertook a voyage through time, unearthing an enigmatic tunnel. This subterranean passage, stretching a staggering 4,200 feet in length and plunging 42 feet into the earth, was but the beginning of their revelation. In this sacred hub, a colossal religious center, history shimmered. A fabric is woven with three sanctuaries, more than 1,500 artifacts, and a treasury of golden coins. These coins, engraved with the visages of legends, bore the weight of Alexander the Great, Queen Cleopatra, and the Nile's potent guardian, the crocodile-headed Potomus. Yet the tale grew more intriguing as tunnels coursed toward the Mediterranean's embrace. Echoes of earthquakes past reverberated through time. Their tremors may have caused a part of the tunnel to crumble, concealing secrets beneath layers of earth. Among these secrets, the elusive tomb of Egypt's famed Queen Cleopatra remained tantalizingly elusive. The clues unveiled were like stars aligning, a symphony of hints suggesting Cleopatra's resting place might lie hidden within. During her reign, Cleopatra and her paramour, the Roman general Mark Antony, were hailed as incarnations of the divine Osiris and Isis. The echoes of these gods whispered through the temple of Osiris that graced the land. These whispers urged the archaeologists to push further, extending their excavations with anticipation in their hearts. After delving into the mysteries of twenty temples across Alexandria, no sight mirrored the conditions of the sacred Tapasiris Magna, the cradle of legends. Now, as the sun-kissed sands yield to the hands of dedicated researchers, a sense of anticipation envelops the air. Patience becomes their ally as they await the crescendo, a moment when the earth shall relinquish its secrets. Cleopatra's tomb, perhaps the most sought-after relic of ancient Egypt, teases them from the depths, poised to rewrite history's narrative. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. It's time for today's discussion. In the hushed depths of the ocean, where the secrets of time slumbered, a group of intrepid archaeologists embarked on a journey that would alter the course of history. With modern equipment as their guide, they plunged into the mysterious abyss, their eyes peeled for remnants of an ancient world. And then, as if beckoned by an age-old whisper, they stumbled upon it, a rectangular box-like shape, its rocky exterior a testament to the eons it had spent concealed beneath the waves. The artifact exuded an air of mystery, its rough texture hinting at the unfathomable stories it held within its stony embrace. Their hands gently brushed against its surface, feeling the weight of ages past coursing through their fingertips. It was more than just an object. It was a bridge connecting them to civilizations long gone. As the archaeologists worked tirelessly, they marveled at the preciousness of their find. With unwavering determination, they orchestrated a ballet of technology and skill, employing a colossal crane to hoist the artifact from the ocean's watery grasp. The water's surface trembled as the relic emerged, cradled in the embrace of the massive machinery. But the true challenge lay ahead. This artifact was no mere trinket. It held the weight of history, and as it was gingerly transported to solid ground, its heft became apparent. It was heavier than two African adult elephants, an astonishing revelation that left the team awestruck. How had such a colossal creation found its resting place beneath the sea? As they stared at the rocky enigma before them, the archaeologists were consumed by a sense of urgency. What tales did this artifact safeguard? 
what forgotten civilizations had etched their stories into its stony exterior. The artifact's secrets awaited revelation, and the team was ready to embark on a journey of discovery that would unlock the mysteries of a time long past. With each chisel mark and brush stroke, they would unveil a narrative woven by the hands of history, bringing to light the echoes of a distant era that had finally resurfaced from the depths of the sea. What do you think of this ancient artifact? Let us know in the comments below. Number 5. The Hall of Records The mythical library of knowledge, the repository of alchemy, astronomy, mathematics, magic, and medicine, has intrigued many minds. It's a riddle pondered over the ages. Legend speaks of an enigmatic labyrinth beneath the Sphinx, concealing the fabled Hall of Records. This subterranean realm, so the tale goes, cradles the essence of essential knowledge. The cryptic chambers within Tetis Pyramid in Saqqara hint at an age-old tradition, pharaohs entombed with wisdom. Hieroglyphs etched into history allude to celestial ascensions, the transference of power into realms beyond. Spells that promise to breathe life into pharaohs lie enshrined like whispered secrets of ancient magic. Were the seekers merely lured by whispers of hidden wisdom, or is this a relic of the past? A testament to gifting knowledge in burial rites. The thirst for answers is inherent to humanity's curiosity. Modern exploration began with American faith healer Edgar Cayce, who entranced, spoke of the Hall of Records, a vault for knowledge from epics past. Casey, claiming the mantle of a reincarnated Atlantean priest, outlined a path from the Sphinx's paw into this trove. This epiphany kindled quests that persist to this day. Yet reality intertwines with controversy. An ambitious drill pierced the Sphinx's paw, creating a seven-meter abyss in pursuit of the library. A desperate attempt to unearth the truth, yet the chambers remained elusive. Seismic echoes teased at chambers, but nature, not man's touch, had sculpted them. Authorities intervened as the monument's preservation was paramount. Carelessness risked demolishing both the Sphinx and the Hall of Records if it existed. Number 4. Egypt's Oldest Tomb, Oriented to the Winter Solstice Deep within the annals of time, archaeologists unearthed a treasure, an ancient tomb in Egypt, standing as a testament to precision and cosmic harmony. This hallowed ground, the oldest of its kind, was carefully crafted to align with the sunrise on the winter solstice. As the shortest day dawned, the sun's gentle embrace bathed a sacred space, destined to hold the statue of a city's esteemed governor. This governor, a luminary of Elephantine, walked the corridors of history during the 12th dynasty of Egypt, around 1830 BCE. The tomb's enigmatic design was brought to life by an ingenious Egyptian architect. Armed with a two-cubit pole, a three-foot staff, a square, and robes, they embarked on a mathematical odyssey. The result? A chapel precisely oriented to the sun's dance, a tribute to the governor's statue. With measured calculations, this tomb encapsulated the solar cycle, a symphony of rebirth and renewal. The winter solstice, a luminous threshold, marked the sun's triumph over darkness. The days lengthened, echoing the ancient belief in resurrection. Meanwhile, the summer solstice synced with the Nile River's annual flood, a celebration of life's vital flow. Number 3. A Geometric Miracle Tunnel Beneath the fabled Egyptian city of Tapos Iris Magna, archaeologists embarked on an expedition of awe-inspiring proportions. Guided by Kathleen Martinez from the University of Santo Domingo, their journey led them to the heart of history, a temple concealed beneath the sands. As they ventured forth, a tunnel unveiled itself, beckoning from 43 feet beneath the surface. This subterranean wonder, standing six feet tall, navigated a labyrinth of 4,281 feet through the resolute sandstone, an engineering marvel of geometric finesse. Egypt's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities hailed it a geometric miracle, drawing parallels to the ancient Greek ingenuity embodied by the tunnel of Eupolinos, a 6th century BC aqueduct on the island of Samos. Mystery veils the purpose of parts submerged beneath the water, yet whispers of excitement abound. Could this tunnel be a thread woven through time, guiding us toward the elusive Cleopatra's lost tomb? Decades of excavations in this sacred ground have unfurled hints pointing toward the indomitable Cleopatra, 
the last of Egypt's Ptolemy dynasty. Reigning from 51 BCE to her enigmatic passing in 30 BC, Cleopatra's legacy is etched in history. Number 2. A Mummy Wrapped in Foreign Pape In 1848, Mahalo Barak, a Croatian official, embarked on a journey that would unveil a captivating discovery. In Alexandria, Egypt, he acquired a sarcophagus with a female mummy, igniting the mummy's voyage into the annals of history. This was during the epic of Egyptomania, sparked by Napoleon's Egyptian campaign in 1798 that enraptured Europe with all things Egyptian. Returning to Vienna, Barak unveiled the mummy in his sitting room and placed it in a glass case, capturing the allure of ancient Egypt. After Barak's demise, his artifacts passed to his priest brother, who later donated them to the Archaeological Museum of Zagreb, formerly the State Institute of Croatia, Slovenia, and Dalmatia. The true significance of the mummy's linen wrappings would lie dormant for years. Not until these wrappings arrived at the Institute did scholars realize they bore writing, believed to be Egyptian hieroglyphs initially. A decade later, their true nature surfaced. They were Etruscan. The wrappings, now called the Linen Book of Zagreb, emerged as the longest known Etruscan text, hailing from the 3rd century BC. This remarkable discovery, the only linen book from that era, is a linguistic portal to the Etruscan civilization, a people whose intricate customs later influenced the Romans. Paleographic evidence dates the book to 250 BC, and it references local Etruscan deities. Its origins are rooted in the vicinity of southeast Tuscany, near Lake Trasimeno, where Etruscan cities once thrived. The linen book, silent for centuries, now imparts whispers of an enigmatic civilization that thrived in Italy long ago. Number 1. A Massive Statue in Cairo Slum Beneath the bustling streets of a Cairo slum, a remarkable discovery emerged from the depths. A colossal 26-foot statue submerged in groundwater. The Antiquities Ministry deemed this an extraordinary find, hailing it as one of the most momentous discoveries to date. Archaeological experts concur that this statue likely portrays the illustrious pharaoh Ramses II, a dominant ruler of ancient Egypt over 3,000 years ago. The statue's unveiling near the ruins of Ramses II's temple in the ancient city of Heliopolis, located in modern-day Cairo's eastern precinct, adds an aura of historical significance. Ramses II, also known as Ramses the Great, was the third of Egypt's 19th dynasty, his reign encompassed victorious military endeavors and vast territorial expansion, shaping an Egyptian empire stretching from Syria to Nubia. The statue's head, raised by a robust forklift, elicited awe and reverence among onlookers, a moment of shared wonderment. Moreover, the Egyptian-German expedition revealed a life-sized limestone upper part of another statue. Possibly it's fitting that this statue might portray Ramses II's grandson, Pharaoh Seti II, B of Ramses II, as the Sun Temple in the same city attests to his magnificence. The temple, founded by Ramses II himself, once stood as one of Egypt's grandest, dwarfing even Luxor's Karnak. Although ravaged by the passage of time, it remains whisper tales of splendor, and its legacy echoes through the stones that have been repurposed in the development of Cairo. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.